close, but no cigar. The fifth installment in the DC Extended Universe was released nationwide on November 17, 2017 to mixed reviews and disappointing box office returns. Now normally, $650 million isn't disappointing, but with a production budget north of $300 million, Justice League is the most expensive non-Pirates movie ever made, so it needed to earn quite a bit more to match expectations. The PG-13 rated comic book action film continues where Batman v Superman left off. Inspired by Superman's sacrifice, Batman assembles a team of superheroes to face mankind's most dangerous foe yet. Ben Affleck returns as the Batman, portraying him with slightly more humor and hope than in his earlier appearances, describing his power as being rich. I still prefer Christian Bale and Michael Keaton, but Batfleck is definitely growing on me. The flawlessly beautiful Gal Gadot returns as well, and is expectedly fantastic as Wonder Woman. Her effortless charisma carries every scene she's in. Henry Cavill doesn't show up until the final act, but does serviceable work as the Man of Steel, digitally removed mustache and all. Ezra Miller's turn as The Flash is a breath of fresh air for the franchise, injecting some much needed and often effective levity and sarcasm. Silica based quartz sand fabric, abrasion resistant, heat resistant. Uh, yeah, I do competitive ice dancing. It's what they use on the space shuttle to prevent it from burning up on re entry. I do very competitive ice dancing. Whoever you're looking for, it's not. The hunky Jason Woma, pessimistic Ray Fisher, and wise Jeremy Irons round out the cast with solid, if forgettable, parts. The big problem, however, is that outside of single-scene cameos, none of the new team members were properly introduced in earlier movies. Indeed, Wonder Woman is the only participant to have received a true standalone film beforehand. Warner Brothers saw the success Marvel had with the Avengers, and desperately wanted to mimic that ensemble film's massive success. But you can't have your cake and eat it too. You need to lay the groundwork, and build a universe of characters over time. The impatience of this franchise is its very undoing. 120 minutes simply isn't enough time to bring all of these larger-than-life characters together, let alone have the audience actually care about them. Comic fans with prerequisite knowledge of these heroes and properties may be able to overlook the hurried exposition, but as a standalone experience, Justice League feels rushed and incomplete. This is most clearly evident with the main baddie, a generic alien demon thing who wants to collect boxes to destroy the planet for some dumb reason. His characterization is paper-thin, utterly uninteresting, and honestly one of the worst villains of this genre. All that being said, though, the deficiencies of this movie's antagonists are ultimately immaterial, as the main attraction here really is the titular World Saving Squad, assembled on the big screen for the first time. To that end, the only real requirement for this type of movie is to include one slow-motion hero shot of the entire group during the climactic fight. Just one. This basic linchpin of superhero filmmaking unfortunately seems to elude director Zack Snyder, as the protagonists often feel like they're performing in separate movies. The closest thing we get in Justice League to that triumphant, crowd-pleasing moment is Soups' surprise entrance and clunky one-liner about being a fan of justice. A piece of dialogue just as likely to elicit jeers than cheers. On the plus side, however, the switch to a taller 16x9 frame allows Snyder to really capture the action sequences with steadier, wider setups. Plus, the more we get to see of Gal's impeccable bone structure, the better. Speaking of action, the best showcase arrives when our heroes attempt to battle a newly resurrected and very confused Superman. The moment when the Flash notices him clocking his supersonic speed and is immediately taken aback is definitely my favorite in the film. Unable to finish production due to personal reasons, Snyder was replaced by Joss Whedon to complete post-production and reshoots. But neither director's trademark styles is present here. Instead, everything feels flat, safe, and predictable. The movie's inconsistent tone and detrimentally short runtime is likely a result of this made-by-committee approach. Whedon also replaced Snyder's longtime collaborator Junkie XL with veteran comic book composer Danny Elfman. Borrowing a few famous cues from earlier films, including his own, the score is a nice mix of traditional orchestral fanfare, but is starkly different than this franchise's previous sound. But unlike its 2016 predecessors, Justice League is never offensively bad. It just lacks vision and personality. The entire adventure is rote. To quote Jurassic Park's Ian Malcolm, Warner Brothers was so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. The result is a film that occasionally succeeds in spite of itself. A far cry from the home run it should have been, Justice League is a middling experience with flashes of excitement, mired by wasted potential. Very flawed, but still very watchable. I thought it was good. That does it for this review, but if you'd like to watch more Movie Night, click or tap the thumbnails on the left. And don't forget to visit jogwheel.com to see full episodes of this show, in addition to the other content I produce. My name is Jonathan Paula, thanks for watching, and have a good movie night.